Welcome back to my channel, everybody. I'm Susan Lynn. I'm a psychic and a medium. Thank you so much for joining me today. And I'm telling you guys, this guest, I am so excited to have Karen of littlebluelotus.org. She's an astrologer, you guys, but not just any astrologer, not just any astrologer. And if you were in my membership, you would know this because she gave us a presentation on the North Star, the North Node, which is like your North Star. And it was so fascinating. I thought I've got to get this one on my channel because she can help us. And God knows we need help right now because the energy is insane and we don't know why and we don't know what it's going to do. And we're all talking about March, right? Aren't we all talking about March? So Karen, no. thank you so much for coming on. I really appreciate it. And she's going to talk about the Pluto return, uh, which happened last year, but it's still affecting us. And she's going to make sense. I'm telling you, just sit down, pay attention. This is going to help you. Let's go, Karen. Let's help. Please help us. <laughs> oh, thank you so much, Susan. I'm too thrilled much to pressure be on you. <laughs> okay. Help the people. Help us. Help us. Help the people. Listen, um, the Pluto return did happen last year, and uh, we're still being affected by it because it's still uh, it's still within what we call the orb of influence. Uh, the Pluto in the United States chart is 27 degrees. We're in 28, 29 degrees, and and classically, uh, the you still feel the force of the planet within three degrees of the the, the planet that you're talking about. And I do want to mention that the United States chart is so unique. The country is so unique. I heard a historian say once uh, not long ago that this country is the only country on the planet that was born from an idea, not because of tribal connections, not because of race or cultural connections, but because of an idea. So this makes us tremendously unique. and. Uh, you know, it just, it, it touches my heart to realize that I'm incarnated at this time in this country, hopefully to help build, help lift, and uh, all of your viewers, I'm sure, feel the same way. So Pluto has to do with uh, mass movements. It has to do with ugly things from our past. And uh, in the United States chart, it's placed in the second house of wealth of and wealth? memory. I'm sorry, wealth? Wealth. Wealth. Uh -huh. Yeah. So the money, how it's distributed, how it's how it's valued, what the values of the country are. And having Pluto there means that uh, the, the masses of people in the United States are all affected by the same value system. That's how the country was born. Of course, we're not that way now. But the Pluto that's coming and touching the, the, the Pluto of the United States is bringing all that stuff out. It's bringing the question of values out. You know, what is important to us? What is important to us in terms of how the wealth is distributed, how we're taking care of people that can't take care of themselves? And so um, all of that is being affected politically when we have somebody like Joe Biden in office who's trying to push through legislation that is gonna take care of the most vulnerable in this society. Um, I think it's it's so interesting, especially after watching the uh, the State of the Union and how he cornered the GOP into, you know, in public on tape saying, "Yeah, yeah, we're not going to touch Social Security." So I that was that was a that was a that was a major coup right there. Um, so what we have is going on. We have people that are, uh, we have the energy lifting and we have people either grabbing onto that energy or clinging to the old energy just furiously and stubbornly. They're not going to change their mind. Um, I feel very strongly that a lot of these folks that are uh, still clinging to the old ways, the old restricted, constricted, emotional, negative things uh, are, have been incarnated over and over again, and they just can't seem to let go. They just can't seem to let go. So there are people on the fringe, I think, that are starting to move in, in the direction of the light. But um, I think you've mentioned it before. Other readers have mentioned it before. My friends have mentioned it before. There are certain groups of people that are never going to uh, move in the right direction. 
and we have to, you know, bless them and move on, which is something that you've been telling your folks all along too. And Pluto, I mean, so if Pluto is sort of a reckoning, what I understand, what my guides are saying, because I don't know anything about astrology, but they're talking about it being a reckoning energy. There's a reckoning here uh, that we are, and why, why all of a sudden, and are we going to be able to see, like, I feel like we've been in a cave or we've had our eyes covered. Mm -hmm. And I think for the first time, and I don't know why this is now, or maybe this energy just takes a while to build, right? But mm -hmm. I feel like this, the coming towards March and coming towards the summer and this year, we're going to be able to see okay. reality in a new way. And that okay. means the dark and the light. Right. And that is the excellent. I love the language of your guides. <clears throat> Reckoning is a perfect word to use. Uh, one of the actions of Pluto, one of the characteristics of the Plutonian force is the ability to, uh, Pluto rules laser beams, okay? So the characteristic of Pluto is to be able to go through layers and layers and layers and layers to finally see the root of what's behind something, whether it's a mental illness or a physical illness or a very tangled up complex situation somebody with a strong Pluto in their chart, for instance, will be able to see through that. They don't play games. They can see all the layers very, very clearly. So that, I think that would uh, describe exactly what your guides are talking about. The ability, and Pluto is slow. It's the slowest planet in, in the uh, Zodiac. So okay. it's it takes a long time. But once that laser beam gets down to the bedrock, you're going to see it. You're going to see what it is that you're searching for, looking for. So that's perhaps why it's, even though the Pluto return was last year, that's perhaps why it's maybe taken this long for us to really start to feel some of those effects. Yeah. yeah. To feel the effects and also for the, um, you know, we're waiting for justice. We're waiting for justice. We're waiting for that reckoning that your guides are talking about. And again, the action of Pluto was slow because it goes to the very bottom. It digs up all the stuff from the very bottom, all the complex, ugly things from the very bottom. And it takes a lot of time because Pluto was so darn slow. Pluto is the only planet that has an elliptical, an elliptical orbit, which is one of the reasons why it takes 284 years to go all the way around. All the other planetary orbits are round. They're all round like circle, not Pluto. Oh. Not Pluto. <laughs> which gives it a unique viewpoint right i mean mm -hmm. if all the other planets are are giving you this viewpoint of this circle then mm -hmm. then pluto gives you this different viewpoint as well that's right. very interesting right. okay so i need to ask you <laughs> what is pluto is the is the pluto return as we go into this next year is it is it really going to help us have justice? Is it really going to bring that reckoning? I mean, does it only just say, let me help you see, which is a lot, but is there any energy of action or, or what okay. energy of action is there? Great question. Um, I think we're going to see uh, when it finally gets out of Capricorn and into Aquarius briefly in March, we're going to see some things that are going to come to a conclusion. And then it's going to move back into a uh, uh, it's going to move back into uh, Capricorn uh, early summer, and not really get into Aquarius fully for the next twenty years until early March of twenty twenty four. So, to answer your question, we're going to see some conclusions in the spring and early summer. Then we're going to see more things that we were waiting for not come to a conclusion until maybe early twenty twenty four where they're going to sweep up all of the criminals and we're going to see the, you know, the indictments and the trials and the sentencing and that kind of thing. That that's how I feel it's going to work. So sorry. I know 1-800-SPIRIT-GUIDES press two for astrology two. complaints. That's complaints. two for astrology yes. complaints. Okay. I, <laughs> we are just telling you what we see here. Um, but I'm going to just hang on to the glimmer of hope lodged in your words. And I'm going to ask you, <laughs> do we think i mean what what can we expect to see with pluto 
sticking its toe in the water of a of Aquarius for that little it's like a preview of a movie right it's like oh yeah. I saw the previews that's coming in 24 and what can we expect to see in in March of this year when when Pluto gives us that little preview what well, how for, might it manifest well for people that are sensitive to energy they're definitely going to feel a lightning of the energy Pluto and Capricorn has been very very heavy so um, people that aren't sensitive to energy might just feel physically more energetic, mentally less down in the dumps, um, people that are dealing with depression. And this really kind of applies to a lot of people in the country coming out of the COVID pandemic, people that have lost people in their family, their friends, um, people that have been closed up, people that have been frightened to go out and do things. Uh, they're going to feel more confident to be able to reconnect with groups of people. Aquarius has to do with groups of people. Pluto has a lot to do with groups of people. So I think that that lightning is going to make it easier to be social without and, and see the people that we care about and enjoy ourselves more uh, for that, at least that short amount of time. So that's one big thing that I think we're going to feel with Pluto and Aquarius. Um, you you spent one whole um, video talking about the medical breakthroughs. That's all Pluto and Aquarius stuff. Aquarius has a lot to do with science. And so Pluto, again, that laser blink, that laser beam cutting through the confusion or uh, misled ideas, um, uh, doctors, physicians, scientists that are stuck with old ways of thinking that don't work. You know, moving that into Aquarius is like, this is cutting edge stuff. This is new stuff. This is people that are uh, geniuses that are inventing new things for us, new, new, uh, new ways of healing, new ways of uh, doing energy issues, um, all that stuff. We're going to see some of that stuff starting to break through, I think, this spring. Yay. Yes, yes, yeah. yes. And then talking about Pluto and what the guides are saying, please correct them if they're wrong, that, I tell them. <laughs> that, um, that this, even though uh, Pluto does dip its toe into Aquarius and then retreats back into Capricorn, mm -hmm. that energy that we're exposed to, that lightning of the energy and mm -hmm. that willingness to be a little bit more expansive around groups of people, is actually going to continue. Like, I don't see our energy retreating. I kind of see it's like the horse is out of the barn. And I kind of mm -hmm. feel like we will continue with that energy. Maybe it won't feel as expansive, but I don't see mm -hmm. that people retreat with Pluto back to that heavy Capricorn energy. Would that excellent? That I right? was hoping that was going to be the case, but you know, <laughs> you we've, never, not, we've, we've never experienced a Pluto return. We haven't, you know, oh. uh, personally, no one is going to experience a Pluto return again. I say thank God, and um, so I was hoping that that's how the action was going to be for uh, us. Okay, okay. They they say yes. It's like the energy's out of the bag. You can't put it back. I mean, Pluto will go mm -hmm. back, and that. That means that those laser beams are not going to be drilling to the bottom of of that particular of the of the Aquarius energy, right? Right, um, right? But but perhaps what they're telling me is those laser beams are going to go back into Capricorn, which is work, 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 right? So then yes. I think what's going to happen is is that um, those laser beams are going to go back into Capricorn, where they're going to seal the deal, is what they're saying on those indictments. Oh. It's yes. not time to move on from those investigations. It's time to finish the work we began. So you kind of see this lightning of the energy. They're giving me chills. They're giving, they're, you're going to see this lightning of the energy and this, you're free to move about your country kind of energy, yeah. you know, like yeah. on the airplane, you're free to move about the move cabin. About the cabin, yeah. And, and, but but there's still work to be done and Pluto's going to do it. It's not done yet. It needs to go back into that work-minded Capricorn for the rest of this year. Uh, so I feel like what we might see are lots of tentative, and, and they're not really tentative because they're real, but indictments. You might see a lot of indictments. Okay, so I think in that time of March, you're going to start seeing indictments. And then I think that that gives 
Look, people have time. It's a free country. You, you lawyer up, you get your, your chance to, mm-hmm. you know, discovery to see what they have on you and you get your chance for your day in court. That could very well take six months or eight months. I mean, that could bring us into October or even into early 24, which they're going to be very mindful about because we have an election in 24 and we have to finish now. this stuff up before mm-hmm. that, you know, that safe period of time, which only the Democrats apparently abide by. But anyway, yeah. um, you know, we will abide by it. So that's very interesting. Um, so you, so some other things, why do you have anything that you could speak to that would help me understand from an energy perspective as an energetic mm-hmm feeling person and many of us are why march seems like a big deal like the ides of march like there's some game changing would that have something to do with pluto going into aquarius yes it has a lot um, to do with that it has a lot to do with uh the saturn in the sky moving into pisces anytime you get one of those big boy planets moving from one sign to another because they they move slowly so when they're stuck in a sign for a while, uh, Saturn, for instance, is in, in a, generally in a sign for two years. So once Saturn moves into a different sign, the energy shifts. Uh, the Pluto is going to be a huge shift. Um, Uranus in the sky, which rules explosions, radical change, is in the sign of Taurus. It's not going to change signs, but um, it's going to be uh, putting pressure on the Pluto in Aquarius for sure. So that these indictments are going to be like explosions, Um, like, whoa, that's a surprise. So um, those things all working together in March uh, is, you know, is they're kind of feeding each other into shifting big shifts of energy in March. Okay, so that's why in that explosive energy is what I see, like flipping of the tables, right? The guides talk about the flipping flipping tables. tables. Yeah, that that's this explosive energy of. A firecracker also is what they're mm-hmm. saying. Like the fuse has been lit and it's been lit for a long time and it's long just time. going along and then boom in March. Um, and that that explosive energy could simply be a surprise indictment uh, again. And then and then I want to remind you guys that then that Pluto is going to move back into Capricorn where it says, I've got work to do. I, I yeah. stepped out of out of my role and I mm-hmm. and I became public. I stepped out of my my office, you know, Garland in the office. I stepped out of my mm-hmm. office. I, I stepped into the public role. I mm-hmm. announced what I need to announce. Now I'm going to go back into Capricorn and I'm going to get my work done. Right. Right. Um, so does that make sense? It, did, it does make sense. And I also want to bring in the fact that you talked about this briefly in one of your recent videos that Pluto in 29 degrees, the 29 degree placement of any planet, especially a big one, even though Pluto is little, the, it's a little bit mighty, mighty, um, mighty. Yeah. <laughs> it, uh, when it's in 29 degrees. I think this is a crucial a-, a part of the answer to that question. The the energy has been building and building and building since 2008 when Pluto first went into Capricorn. And anytime you've got a planet moving to 29 degrees, whether it's in a natal chart, it's showing me past life energy pushed into that issue of the planet for many, many lifetimes. And by God, we're going to solve it in this lifetime. Now for the United States in 29 degrees, it's like, oh my God, it's like a, it's like a a volcano. The force is like a volcano. And now we're at the tipping point at 29 degrees. We're going to like do it or die kind of thing. So that, that happens in March as well, you know, right before it goes into Aquarius, of course, it's in the last degree of Capricorn, 29 degrees. That okay. magic point where it's like, oh my God, now it's all going to. Okay. okay. Yeah. Russell, do you know, I mean, I don't want to put you on the spot because I know that your chart is probably this small on your computer. Is there a time frame for when that happens? I'm sure there is. Yes, yes, it does. I have my ephemeris here. Um, like actually, we're, we're moving into that right now. We're moving oh into God. it. Uh, oh God, the 12th of February. Two days from now, it's uh, it's moving into 29 degrees, and it will be there until March 24th when it moves into Aquarius. Yes, I'm just gonna throw it now. Yeah, 
I just you know, a preamble, just a little extra, you know, oomph mm-hmm. to help the energy. Wow. So we, so but we've got a few weeks of this yeah. energy of, yeah. of like uh, firecrackers going off. I'm here for it all day. I'm here. Um, okay. Mm-hmm. Awesome. That is so exciting. Okay. So then. I, I don't know. They want me to ask you about, because I think this must be a thing. So I have a lot of viewers from all over the world and I feel like, uh, this, uh, Pluto going and look at me talking planets. That's them. Yeah, look anyway, at you. This, this Pluto, I I've never done this in my life. It's them. Um, this Pluto going into Aquarius and dipping its little toe, it's big fat toe in this Aquarius energy, which is masses of people. You said, Mm-hmm. And, and you talked about when we were, before we went live, you were saying, you know, groups of people like uh, Black Lives Matter, Me Too movement. But I also saw the Iranian women that have been standing up oh, against yes. that, that oppression. But I, but, but also just right now, they're talking to me about the Ukrainian people. So Pluto, uh-huh. Pluto is going to, drill down to the depths uh, to create this reckoning to show Mm -hmm. us what's going on also in masses of people, right? During this time period that the United States is having the 4th of July in March with all these pops Uh and cows um, and and independence, right? They just showed, they said 4th of July was your independence, but in many ways Mm -hmm. you're going to be gaining your independence, a new, a new independence day, uh, mm-hmm. from these traitorous energies, but how mm-hmm. is it going to affect, or how would you think it might affect these other countries or these other people? I mean, we have Brexit, we have Britain that has been mm-hmm. challenged by Brexit. I don't know why, but Australia is always on my mind lately oh, about yeah. some sort of movement, some sort of people movement strikes. What do you think about mm-hmm. that? Well, even though we're having a Pluto return, the Americans are having a Pluto return. The other countries probably aren't, but Pluto in 29 degrees Capricorn affects the whole planet. It's the planet in our solar system at 29 degrees Capricorn. So Capricorn is governments. Capricorn is authority figures. Capricorn is rules and regulations. Pluto is beginnings and endings. So we've got both things going on uh, at the same time for the planet. For Just the planet, for right? the planet. So, yeah. so, but and then when when it goes into Aquarius for a minute, that's mm-hmm. also for the whole world, and that's masses yes. of people. So yes. you have it going from this tipping point, breaking point. You got to do it or else. Twenty nine degrees mm-hmm. into people, into masses of people. Mm-hmm. So, mm-hmm. can you see that? I mean, would that? How would that play out for Ukraine? Do you think? I mean, if you, I mean, that's that's. I I I think well you know the feeling of Aquarius is the brotherhood of man you know I'm not okay unless all my brothers and sisters are okay so that feeling of unity that feeling of solidarity um, I think there might be a breakthrough for the Ukraine where the world celebrates what's going on in Ukraine I'm hoping what do your guides have to say about that banding together banding together well you know it's interesting because ukraine it's been discovered and Zelensky has handled this he's not pushed this under any carpet but it's been discovered that there was some grift in the uh food um you know delivering the food to the troops Mm -hmm. there was some grift there and he fired people and he fired somebody in his own government and that's that that's that Capricorn you're talking about getting mm-hmm. to this 29 degrees where we're going to sort our governments out. So I mm-hmm. feel like maybe that 29 degrees is Capricorn is, is U- Ukraine really getting clean and clear, right? Uh, yeah. About mm-hmm. their, about maybe even cleaning up even more their, their ideology of who they are. And then Mm -hmm. I feel like that could have um, impacts on other countries like Germany, who's been waffling and, you know, other countries that have been sort of, yes, we're going to give you something, maybe, maybe not. So those, those countries, governments may be held to account for the brotherhood. Right. Right. Because those two things are right next to each other, that 29 degrees of Capricorn make or break government and then the brotherhood they're literally right next to each other as pluto goes into 
um, Aquarius for that brief moment, right? So right. I think it's going to bring those things in crisper vision for all of us. We're, we're going to mm-hmm. have a knowing, yes, this is what we mm-hmm. want. We stand together. Um, and so I guess also Pluto in Aquarius, could that create more mass uh, strikes or uh, protest? Would, would it encourage that kind of thing or no? I think that it would, um, but it the the flash the the backlash to somebody to groups protesting isn't going to be as repressive and authoritarian as it was with Pluto in Capricorn. Right. You know, when you push against Pluto in Capricorn, government authority comes back very harshly, very very cruelly. Um, you don't have that with Pluto. You wouldn't have that with Pluto and Aquarius. Pluto and Aquarius authoritarian figures would be more like, well, let's sit down and figure this out. Nice. Maybe you have something to say. Nice. You know, and think I- of, think of the, <laughs> think of Trump. You know, coming out and tear gassing the people that were peacefully protesting, so he could stand in front of the church with an upside down Bible. Um, you know, it, that kind of action shouldn't be happening when you have mass movements with Pluto and Aquarius. Fantastic. So we get a taste of that and then, and then it retreats and then it comes back for 24. Um, so 24, the year of our election here, we could have more equanimity in some ways between mm-hmm. the masses, which is what right. I see. I see more bipartisanship in 24. Um, uh-huh. I see whatever shakes down in 23 and and these people are ousted or or mm-hmm. mostly ousted. I think some will stay until they get indicted and literally handcuffed. Yeah. Uh, but but I think that that will foment more bipartisanship, which which makes sense for going into twenty four with that Pluto and Aquarius. Yes. Yes, I would agree with that. I would agree with that. It, it just seems like the energy shifts uh, so drastically in next year that. This is just like a bad dream. Just like a bad dream. We look back on this year, uh, maybe several years, and think this was a bad dream. Like that fever, they keep telling me about being, the country is in a fever, and the fever is going to pop, and you're going to feel better. But you're also Uh, not going to have those hallucinations that you have when you're in a feverish state, feverish dream, mm -hmm. right? Um, But the fever has to break. And it's that yes. 29 degrees of yes. Pluto, that breaking, yeah. that reckoning. Fantastic. Um, so then you talked about energetically. It's interesting. I get the energetic. Like I know March is going to be big. A lot of us have been saying March is going to be big, but no one's been able to understand why March is going to be big. So you've helped us understand that, which is very helpful. Okay. Thank you. The other thing that I get is October. Um, September, October, and specifically October is also Mm -hmm. going to be another month that feels like Mm -hmm. it's going to be big, but I don't know why. Is there some astrological reason that that might be the case? Yes. Now the planets seem to move in one direction and then change direction and seem to move back. They don't actually do that, but the energy of that planet will change when it appears to stop in the sky and move backwards. When that happens, if it's hitting a if it's hitting a, a sensitive part in your chart, it's like a branding iron. And in October, late October, the Pluto in the sky is going to move back to the same degree that the Pluto in the United States chart is in 27 Capricorn and stay there. Or, and change direction and go direct. So when it's changing direction in 27 degrees on top of our Pluto in 27 degrees, Pluto is like, this is, there's going to be some really shocking revelations. I'm, I'm thinking in October, we think we've uncovered it all. And in October, there's stuff that comes out that it's just like, oh my God. I don't know. What do your guides, do they confirm that that's, this is like people, the people that 
are going to see are going to see. They will see. There will be more people seeing the truth in October than there, you know, we have so many people fighting the truth. Uh, I think the people that are going to see the truth one way or another, they will see it in October. And it looks like they're going to be prepared for that truth in March. Right. They're going to really get a, a good, a good look at it. Right. right. And not right. a, not a teasing look, a mm -hmm. real a legal, I'm feeling judicial look, a real, like something's going to be, the hammer comes down in March and then yeah. something yeah. more in October. That's even deeper. It's like that goes, those lasers go even deeper. Mm -hmm. I'm hoping that there aren't going to be any, um, there's not going to be like an incident of a, of a racial killing or, um, you know, something, something, with a vulnerable person that the authorities do something horrible to with that station point. Uh, I'm just wondering if someone isn't prepared to sacrifice themselves in this lifetime to show us something really, really powerful in October. I, you know I what, hope. you know, and I, and I'll, I'll say, I'll say you guys that in my experience, when I get energy like this, what I've learned is that that is the energy. The energy is that's like you're reading the words on a book. That is the energy. But when it when it comes off of the book and it's spoken and it's acted out in the human form, it often manifests differently. So this energy and when you said that, I got like Tiananmen Square, which I've gotten before. Yeah. So the guy standing in front of the tank or the person standing in front of the tank, um, all those people that that protest that that kill themselves in protest right um yeah. that is the energy it is the breaking the breaking point no one is listening you guys are not getting the message mm -hmm. something has to break this fever something has to break the fever now mm -hmm. it, honestly it could manifest in a number of ways right um depending on the work we do when we're mm -hmm. shown in march if we're shown this in march and, and people, and I, and I want to say also that we're, we're all who we are. We can't do much, right? Was, some of this is out yeah. of our hands, but if the media can coalesce around this message and we can start to really gain more acknowledgement and awareness and ownership of the mm -hmm. problem, then mm -hmm. I think in October that, that breaking point can be a little bit more gentle. Yes. Yes. That would be my hope. And and you and the other readers that have been talking to your viewers about trying to improve their own energy, trying to make time to pray, trying to make time to meditate and send that energy out into the world has already made huge changes. It's already softened a lot of karma for a lot of people all over the world. It works. It really does work. Yeah. So I guess when I said we're only one person, that's what you're answering is, we are potent, right, in our in our energy that we don't even know. We we can send those prayers, and together, as in, in mass, you know, mm -hmm. we can have an effect. Um, but whatever happens is is the needed action to get us where we're going. I mean, that's the bottom right. line. It's uh, we we are going to get there. Make no mistake. Make no mistake. We're going to get there. Mm -hmm. um, we're going to get to this place of, of more brotherhood and sisterhood, as you said, next year. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes, absolutely. It just depends what timeline we're going to use or in, in, from my traditions, what karma is going to have to happen on the way before we get to that point. So let's all try to soften it. Let's all try to lighten it up. Yeah. That's what we've been trying to do now that we're, we're out of the pandemic and most of us are feeling healthy again. Let's focus on that. Yeah. And, and we can also focus on those helping those that aren't feeling healthy, right? I mean, you can also take a yeah. moment and lift those people up that are stuck oh, yeah. from, from those things. And it's fascinating and also just uh, heartening to understand that this is also going to be a year of medical breakthroughs. And I think if you match that with this brotherhood, sisterhood energy, that, that you can see that we might well be on the path to more accessible health care. Absolutely. Um, you know, Pluto in the second house of the United States chart 
is the house of our values. So having that Pluto switching back into, uh, I'm sorry, not back into, but into the sign of Aquarius, which is the brotherhood of man or the sisterhood. And uh, so we're switching that whole value system. That's what a lot of the readers have been talking about in the last year or so, where they've been talking about our values are shifting. And Pluto and Aquarius is definitely going to herald that in March and April, May, in the beginning of June. And then, we, you know, so that we've got a foothold, like you're saying, the toe is in the pool. Like, wow, this really feels good to take care of everybody. This feels really good to be able to add all these wonderful things to our insurance plans and our, our, our doctor's protocols. Um, yeah, absolutely. That's fantastic. That is fantastic. So if, so you said, um, mercifully, we don't live long enough to experience a Pluto return ourselves. Humans don't experience Pluto returns. Obviously countries do. Um, mm -hmm. and our country is, but Pluto does play a role in our own charts, right? Yes. I mean, it can have a placement in your chart. Yeah. And, and if it had a placement in your chart, what, what might you tell someone if they went and got their chart and they saw where Pluto was placed, is there some mm -hmm. placement that they, that, that they should look for and know something about? Well, uh, Pluto in a, in a personal chart has a lot to do with obsessions and compulsions. And it's also a very repetitive kind of movement. So some things that you find yourself doing over and over again, like, you know, maybe opening your mouth at the wrong time and saying the wrong thing, you might have something going on with the Pluto in your chart. Um, or uh, people that are have obsessive compulsive disorders or behavior patterns, that's a Pluto thing. Um, people that tend to get involved with people in secret, like, you know, tend to have a lot of affairs. They might have a real strong Pluto in the chart because Pluto has a lot to do with secrets and things that are going on beneath the surface. So uh, it's interesting to see where Pluto falls in somebody's chart. Um, if you're a very good therapist, a really skilled therapist, whether you're, you've got a lot of letters after your name or you've just gone to school enough to be a social worker, um, they generally will have a very positive, strong Pluto in the chart because that laser beam characteristic of Pluto enables them to see a client and, uh, and see through their stories, see through their, you know, clients can be very manipulative. You know, they're broken people and they have the games that they play to protect themselves but a really good therapist with a really strong, positive Pluto in the chart can see through that and guide that person into a place of healing. People that do uh, energy healing will have a very strong Pluto in the chart. You have a very strong Pluto in your chart. Um, oh. So um, I have a complicated Pluto in my chart. So <laughs> it's caused, um, I was told by one of my uh, very powerful teachers that Pluto tangles things up or clears things up. Oh, so for the Lord, first two thirds of my life, it tangled things up yeah. until I, you know, got a hold of it and uh, learned how to work with it so that it could clear things up. So yeah, Pluto in the in the human chart is very interesting. Absolutely. Wow, that is fascinating. See, this is why I love Karen. And this is why I would suggest you get a, a your chart done with her because you see how she brings it down to earth. It, we have not talked about a trine, a, an aspect, a square, nothing, mm -hmm. but yet we've given, she's given us really valuable information that's helpful. And I, I just truly love the work that she's done for me. Oh, so God, little blue, you. little blue Lotus, little blue Lotus.org. She's going to get real busy here with this video. So if you're interested, I would suggest you do it sooner rather than later. Um, so one more question, and I'm gonna. This is a curveball that you don't know is coming, <laughs> which is okay. which, which is probably in my chart somewhere. But do you know anything about Biden? Do you do you do you have a sense about Biden's chart? Uh, do you do you feel anything about him uh, in this next few months? I see this yes. as something you've been thinking about. Yes, yes. Uh, I don't, I may have told you, did I, did I, were you one of the people I told about the dream I had about Joe Biden? 
I don't know when I'm doing this, I'm channeling and Susan is not available okay. at this time. Okay. Susan's not available. Okay. So I had a dream about Biden last year and um, I was sitting in the Oval Office and, you know, if you've watched West Wing, <laughs> as many times as I have, you don't usually sit in the Oval Office unless there's a big meeting, but I'm alone in the Oval Office. I'm sitting uh, in, in across the desk from Joe Biden and he's just glowing and he's vital and really alive and in a very good mood. And he says, so you're going to be the White House astrologer. And I'm like, oh, uh, okay, roll with it, Karen. <laughs> I'm like, okay, yeah, I'm really excited about it. And uh, then we're out of the Oval Office and we're in a car and we're going to go someplace to eat. And uh, he's talking and, I, and I'm just impressed with the energy of Joe Biden, this positive, powerful uh, light coming off of him. And uh, we sit down in this little cafeteria to eat and he's talking to me, very good humored, very upbeat and he pats my hand and then he apologizes. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm not supposed to do that. And I remember, you know, back in the campaign where they were trying to call him creepy uncle Joe or something. And I'm like, don't worry about it. And I woke up from the dream and I thought, I don't know if I really met him, but I definitely felt like I met Joe Biden's energy. And this man, <laughs> this man is, he is the most powerful man on the planet. From what, from what my direct experience showed me was that he is a very powerful man. Nothing's gonna get him down. Um, I feel that he is being infused with energy with, from other presidents that have crossed over. And uh, he's happy. It, when he's not happy, he's pissed off, but, uh, you know, he, he rebalances and he's happy and he feels like he's doing, he's doing the work he's meant to do. And, uh, the next few months for him, um, I think is, uh, is he's, you know, the Saturn in the sky moving out of Aquarius, which has been putting a lot of pressure on his chart, uh, the heavy responsibility, the heavy obstacles, the heavy problems is moving into Pisces for him is going to be like, oh, wow, this oh, huge so weight off my relief. shoulder. Yes, big, big relief. And then the Saturn in Pisces, you know, pushing energy harmoniously into all that Scorpio energy in his chart where he's going to be regaining his strength, okay. regaining uh, all the depletions that he has experienced in the past few years. But I have complete trust in this guy. He's going oh, to, he's, he's doing what he needs to do. And uh, after that dream, I just, I'm not the white house astrologer and I doubt if I'll not become yet. one. Not but, yet. But um, Joe, if I, you're watching, she's available. Okay, <laughs> Joe, she's available. I am available. Um, uh, but, your people call her people. Yeah. My people will be talking to your people. You and you need um, some help over there, sir. This man is just divinely guided he's divinely guided yes. yeah so yeah. that's that's great i'm glad to hear that he's going into a time of ease a little bit yes. of ease of restrictions is what the guides are saying yeah. Yeah. um he's i guess saturn feels for him it feels more at home in a water sign because he's a water sign right 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 so that energy feels, but how does Saturn feel in a water sign? Does Saturn feel okay in a water sign? Oh, I'm a water sign. And I can tell you that <laughs> Saturn in a water sign just makes me cry real easily. You know, oh, okay. Pisces, Pisces leaks. Yeah. All my card commercials. Yeah. You know, it's just, so I feel very emotional with Saturn, with Saturn is starting to move into Pisces and I'm already feeling it. I'm like, gosh, darn it. Uh, you know? <laughs> So we might see Joe be more emotional. Yeah. 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 Which is fine. I don't, I don't think he cares. I mean, I, I don't think he cares. That's the thing I also like about Joe. Uh, he he's in this period where he doesn't care. He's not trying to score political points. He's just doing what's the best thing for the people. And he's saying it out loud. He's saying all the quiet things out loud, which is what yes. he did in the in the address in the state of the union address if you haven't seen it it's on c-span just go to youtube and watch it on c-span right. i promise you 
it's a, it's like your, your team is winning the championship. It's what it is. It's like, he's saying all the things you've ever wanted in a politician to say, he's saying it. And he's doing it. He, he was doing it in such a deft, skillful manner. His, his little jokes in the beginning of the talk were very lighthearted, but eh, you know, stinging. that yeah. scorpion sting. Yeah. Yeah. He gotcha. was masterful. Yeah, he, he was nasty. masterful. I mean, he he does stumble, he does stutter, but but it it didn't matter. It 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 really, I think that was to show us the humanity. Right. You think this little boy used to stutter and look at him now, and you're like, oh wow, 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 wow. And even with that sort of that tripping of his tongue, he's still mm -hmm. taking them to school. Yes, so, yes, and there's was. no doubt about it, right? There's no doubt yeah. about it. So I'm glad to hear that. I, 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 I just worry about him. I'm a worrier. Yeah. Um, so um, good to know. All right. Well, I have so enjoyed this, Karen. I really have. I hope you'll come back on my channel again sometime. Oh, uh, yes. <laughs> that this would was be fun. Awesome. Let's do it again. It was fun. Yeah, it was fun. And I learned so much. I'll have to watch the video to see what my guide said. Cause I, that wasn't me like stringing all those oh. words together with planets. I was like, I don't know who's saying that. Oh, stuff. wow. So you sounded like you knew what you were talking about. Totally. I, that's how I knew it wasn't me. I'm like, what the hell is she talking about? Anyway, that's okay. That's fine. Right. I mean, I'm, I'm all about that. So listen guys, one more time, little blue lotus.org. I'll put her information in the, um, in the description of this video, if you're interested in a chart, I, one more thing I want to say, cause they want me to say this. Um, they've been talking about this for a few minutes, uh, Chiron, um, Chiron in your chart, um, and the North node in your chart. Look, there's, there's, of course you can get a chart read that's going to tell you who you are, right? It's going to tell you mm -hmm. your natal chart, your birth chart. It's going to tell you who you are and how you operate in the world. And that's an important thing to know. But a lot of us have had that. So we think, why do we need to do this again? Well, there's two or three things. One is transits. That's who you are. But we just talked about how this transiting Saturn is going to affect Biden and how Pluto might affect you in a way that you're not aware. But there's mm -hmm. also Chiron, the wounded healer. And there's the North Node, the South Node, um, all this stuff about your past lives, I have seen her do this in person in real time. And I'm telling you, I don't know of another astrologer personally that can do oh, it the way she does it. You. So, you know, take that for what it is um, and check out her, um, her channel. She has a YouTube channel, which she's going to be putting more videos on yes, because I am. I'm encouraging her. And I know that you'll encourage her to do that too, because yeah. she can talk about this as such a, an easy to understand way that she can really teach us and help us. You can get your chart out, listen to her talk about these particular points and learn just from that, just from her on a YouTube channel. And she, and she's going to be doing classes. You guys just want to mm -hmm. join her YouTube channel so you can keep up with all the new things that are coming. Um, and your YouTube channel is also little blue Lotus. I think. Yes. It's little blue Lotus astrology on YouTube. Little Blue Lotus Astrology, because if you just put Little Blue Lotus in, you might find me, but there's, I guess, an uh, hallucinogenic Lotus something or other oh my God, that's that you, you'll, you'll see a bunch of those. So uh, you'll yeah. be like, where is she? Yeah. All Little right. Blue Lotus put, Astrology. Put the astrology. All right. Yeah. Listen, Karen, thank you so much. And you viewers, thank you so much for staying to the end of this. I hope it was helpful. I hope it made sense because I honestly don't know at this point because I wasn't here, but I know you're going to let me know in the comments. See, yes. please, please let us know in the comments and Karen will check out the comments. And if you have any questions directly to her, I'm sure she'll check in from time to time and try to answer that. But you can also go to her website and email yeah. her. If you have mm -hmm. a specific question, I'm sure she would be happy to answer that as well. Absolutely. And with that, we're going to say goodbye for now. And I know I'll have her on my channel again. And you guys take really good care of yourselves. Okay. Thank you so much, Susan. You are very welcome. It's been my pleasure. Everybody take care. And we'll talk again soon.